Hey everyone, in this video, I will show you how to set up Platform IO inside Visual Studio Code step by step. So if you want to get up and running quicker, feel free to go to the other video. Otherwise, this is where we'll see a more in depth tutorial. So whether you're using an Arduino, ESP32 or a STEM32 board, this platform will make coding smarter and faster and it is cleaner than the Arduino IDE. If you don't already have it, go to code.visualstudio.com, which is this website here, and download for your system. It could be Windows, Mac, or Linux. Install it just like any other application. So you can click the download for Windows or download, and it will open up your little download ed editor and take the information here of opening it or saving it, depending on your use. I do already have this installed, so I'm going to skip the next part, but save it where you'd like it to be saved and install the program. Once it has finished installing, feel free to pause here. Once it has finished installing, what we're going to do is open Visual Studio Code. And this gives us our main screen when we first launch it. And now what we're going to do is install Platform IO. If we go over to our left navigation bar, we have our extensions menu. We've got this icon here. We'll open that up and we'll just start typing platform. And here it is. So we've got this great little icon. We're going to get that installed. It's usually very quick. There's some information here for you to read if you're interested. Once that has installed, we've got this new icon on the side for Platform IO Core, and we can select it to create a new project or pick a folder. If we click on this creating a new project, this is where we now have our main window. I have not had any errors when I do this process, but if you do get an error here, try restarting VS Code. That usually solves things. So let's explore the Platform IO interface. So after installing, we've got the little alien head on the sidebar. That's Platform IO. And when we click it, it does open up our dashboard here. So in our main dashboard area, this is where we can create new projects, open recent ones, access libraries and different boards, for example. So we just have a little walk through the sidebar here. This is going to be very important for your projects. So we can add projects or create new ones here. Here we have our little um, project inspection tool. Libraries, you'll find very important. You probably used libraries in Arduino if you're already using it. If you're new to Arduino, this is where you'll be searching for libraries if the code that you're using or the component requires it. We can also choose and select our boards. As we can see, there's over 800 boards from different manufacturers, so there's really no limits here. And here we have our platform choices and devices. The things we're going to use the most is coming to this home one to set up our projects and the libraries and boards. Those are the most important ones for you to be aware of. So let's look at creating our first project. Typically, this would be considered our Blink for Arduino or ESP32, kind of the equivalent to the Hello World. So if we create our first project, we will go up to the project menu, for example, or you can go to the home. It's up to you how you choose this. We are going to create the new project. We will give our project name um, and what we're going to end up doing here. We'll choose our board as well and then the framework, which will be Arduino. So our project name, we'll just do Blink to start with. And then our board, I'm going to select an ESP32. So get that typed in. So the mine is just going to be a simple dev module to get up and running. I am going to use the Arduino um, framework here because that was the point of installing Platform IO. And then we can use the default location or feel free to choose a different one. If you unclick the little navigation thing here, you can just choose a new one. I'm going to stick with default just for now. So I'll get that finished. 
and then this will initialize our project. Sometimes it does take a little bit of time and you'll notice the structure is quite different from what you will be used to if you've used Arduino. If you haven't used it, then we're going to just jump in anyways and have a little look at what are the options and what is in our project folders. You'll notice when it does complete this process, there are going to be project folders in our left hand side and we'll just navigate through and look at those. So we'll wait for this to install and then it will open our project. So I paused for a moment here because the process took a couple of minutes and yours might have taken the same amount of time. So feel free to pause while it is preparing those files. When it's finished preparing the files, you can um, open the home tab again and it just returns you to this but it may be also opened this platform IO initialization file. And this is where you'll have certain bits of information for your project. So remember at the beginning when we chose the board that we were using, so this is where that information is written. The um, information here can also include things like upload speeds, so we might set that, for example, and you might have monitor speed and other things like that. So what will happen is any libraries can usually be found here as well. We'll do libraries per project. So this is just where you've got all your initialization information. We'll get that file saved and then we'll have a look over in the left hand side at our navigation area. So you'll see this is definitely a slightly different structure than what you might be used to. In this folder here, you can just drag your libraries directly if you want to do that. And this is where we're concerned. This source folder here has got our main. So as you can see, it does include the Arduino straight at the top. So then we get to use all the same functions for Arduino. And this is essentially sort of a simple sketch that they have um, started for you so you can see that this is um, the file that you can use or edit and it's just a way to get you to help see the structure when using this platform. So if we explore the navigation bar on the left we can see we have our library folder so you can add libraries in there and then we have our source folder here which is where we have our main program and this has been created for us so this is the one that comes with it as a default when you first set up. So what we're going to do is we are going to include um, the first kind of sample program. It's a hello world equivalent. So what we will do for our setup file is we want pin mode and we do want LE built in. Let's get rid of that. Actually, we don't want that. Oops. And then what we're going to do is in our loop, we're going to add our code that does run continuously here. We're going to include our delay and our low. So here we have an issue with the built in is not um, declared. You can go to quick fix and include it. Or if you do know about um, programming, we're going to declare our LED built in and two this is on the ESP32 board. If you are using an UNO for example your built in might be pin 13 and then we'll just save it so I do control S as a shortcut. You can go up to file save and get that file saved for you and then over here we have a few buttons to build or upload. So if your ESP32 is plugged in, we can upload the code. And then normally our terminal space opens at the bottom and this will have descriptive information for you so you know what is happening at the time and if there are errors, we can see here it is writing. And if you then look at your ESP32 board or your UNO, whichever you're using, you'll now see this LED flashing on it. So this is our main code window. This is using our platform IO so that we've kind of created our first file. 
There are also libraries that we can use, some popular libraries, for example, um, the ADEF root, the NeoPixel library is one I do use a lot. I do love the NeoPixels. So then we'll just close the window here. It'll come up with the library that you might be wanting. And it's great. You have examples, installation, and information about it. So examples are always going to be super useful for you. All you need to do is once you've clicked the library and selected it, you can add it to your project. And this way you can add it directly to the project that you are currently working on. When you add this, it will install it. And depending on how it has been added, often it will then show up in our platform IO initialization file here. So now we can see this library dependent, this Adafruit library exists just there.